Welcome back to Hannity. Now, back in January, President Obama naively compared the ISIS terror network to a JV team, telling the New Yorker, quote, the analogy we used around here sometimes, and I think it's accurate, that is if a JV team puts on Lakers uniforms, uh, that does not make them Kobe Bryant. But in the wake of the beheading of U.S. journalist James Foley, the terror group's attacks in both Iraq and Syria, and its video threats to the U.S., well, President Obama is rightly getting slammed for that comment. However, in typical White House fashion, you got press secretary, propagandist Josh Earnest. He's attempting to claim that that quote was taken out of context, all in order to protect his boss. Take a look. Did the president underestimate ISIS when he referred to them in an interview only a couple months ago uh, as a JV squad? I thought somebody might ask this question today, so I wanted to pull, <laughs> I wanted to pull the transcript of the interview uh, because uh, it's important to understand the context in which this was delivered. So the president was not singling out ISIL. He was talking about the very different threat that is posed by a range of uh, extremists around the globe. All right, sorry, Mr. Ernest, that is demonstrably not true. Now, President Obama was answering a question about an Al-Qaeda flag flying in Fallujah, which, according to the ever-so-conservative New York Times, was none other than the ISIS flag. Here with Reaction, author, columnist Mark Stein is with us. Mark, good to see you. Hey, good to see you, Sean. You know, you look at ISIS, ISIL. Yeah, what's, what's happening uh, here, Sean, is that uh, basically ISIS had just taken Fallujah yeah. and were flying their flag from buildings built by Americans, paid for by American taxpayers. And the president, in his characteristic way, was uh, seeking to ignore this. His view of uh, radical Islam and the war on terror and all the rest of it is if he doesn't acknowledge it, it's not happening. Uh, and so in this case, he chose to give this uh, banal and uh, I think actually rather ridiculous analogy uh, about the JVs. If there is a JV player on the court at the moment, you know, if you ask Putin, if you ask the Mullahs, if you ask the Chinese Politburo, if you ask ISIS, if you ask every rinky dink little jihadist on the outskirts of Benghazi, who the JV player on court is, they're not going to have any trouble in telling you that it's President Obama, a man who's uh, shredded American foreign policy uh, and, and left al-Qaeda, ISIS and its affiliates running around gambling across uh, a vast swathe of territory uh, from West Africa to Afghanistan. You know, uh, that's the JV player on the court today. You, you mentioned that this was American built, but it was also American blood. And we watched, not only did he ignore right. the red line that he drew in Syria, but then he watched city after city after city in Iraq fall, where now we're at the point where ISIS has more land, more weaponry, more money, and they're more lethal than even al-Qaeda. And yet in January, he was calling them yeah, the JV essentially. team. essentially. I mean, this is why they're not the JVs and why it's a stupid analogy. Uh, they've merged al-Qaeda and the Taliban. Uh, so they're an ideological global terror uh, network that also controls a sovereign state, uh, and parts of two sovereign states, in fact. They, they've torn up the map of the mo modern Middle East as it was uh, drawn by uh, British and French colonial civil servants in 1922, and they've simply erased the borders when it suits them. And th they haven't taken over Afghanistan, which is basically a worthless pile of rubble by the time the Taliban uh, took Kabul. They've taken over a developed state uh, that has had money in its bank vaults. They control oil. They control uh, the uh, advanced weaponry, not just from Syrian bases they take, where they get surface-to-air missiles, but they control state-of-the-art American weaponry. They're riding around in American tanks. Uh, they're firing American guns. So they have more money. They have more weaponry. They have more oil wealth. Uh, and for the president, a couple of months before uh, they really got going, to be sneering at them that they were just some kind of little league team, uh, I think reveals not just his own stupidity, but the lack of any uh, strategic clarity right. in the White House at all. Let me ask you, there's this mysterious reluctance resistance. The, uh, one simple example. You know, Fort, Fort Hood Major Hassan is screaming, Allahu Akbar. Mm. The, the official American right. position is still workplace violence, not terror. Uh, and you know all the other examples. Right. I want to play for you in 2011, CIA Director John Brennan talking about the idea of a caliphate as a feckless delusion. Because there seems to be a disconnect 
between what reality yeah. is. I want you to analyze the thinking from the White House from this vantage point, listening to this. Our strategy is also shaped by a deeper understanding of al-Qaeda's goals, strategy, and tactics that we have gained over the last decade. I'm not talking about al-Qaeda's grandiose vision of global domination through a violent Islamic caliphate. That vision is absurd, and we are not going to organize our counterterrorism policies against a feckless delusion that is never going to happen. We are not going to elevate these thugs and their murderous aspirations into something larger than they are. Is, is, here's my question. Is the idea of an Islamic caliphate, now, do you see the landmass they've got? Is it a vision that's absurd, a fe feckless delusion that won't happen? Is it elevating these thugs to engage them in the war that they're engaging us in? No, uh, it, it's, it's been going their way uh, in failed state after failed state now. Uh, for six years. And, and, and Brennan there is making the classic administration delusion that simply standing there and prissily uh, unleashing some faculty lounge bromide makes it so. If you recall Obama's statement a couple of days ago uh, uh, upon the uh, decapitation of James Foley when he said uh, ISIS has no place in the 21st century. Well, sorry, but there are thousands and thousands of head choppers who are citizens of Western nations uh, who've gone to uh, Syria and Iraq to decapitate people who feel differently. And there, are, and, there's, and there are support groups of hundreds of thousands of people who are following these guys as if they're the coolest soccer team on the planet well and said. beyond that there are millions and millions of quiescent uh, Muslims who uh, figure that if this is the coming tide if this is the new wave if this is where the, all the energy is in Islam uh, they're not going to uh, dare to speak out about it at their local mosque. And so to have uh, a, a prissy, preening narcissist standing up and saying, well, ISIS has no place in the 21st century, as if, uh, as if it's some ghastly social faux pas, uh, like uh, wearing white after Labor Day, this is completely ridiculous, Sean. It's completely inadequate to what's happening. Well said. I can't say it any better. Mark Stein, good to see you. Thank you.